He was always such a nice boy. He was always such a nice boy. A quiet one with good intentions. Always down for his brother. Respectful to his mother. A good boy. If you hear me, can you listen? Hey y'all. Welcome to Talk Your Shit Liz. So obviously y'all see I'm here with my son today. We pulling, vibing as usual. Damn, I set it up in my room today. Cause I ain't feel like going out in the other room. Especially with him. But I got my equipment. Y'all can kind of see with the lighting. It's a little dark in here period. So it's really no one justice. It's got different sets. Like I'm allowed microphone. Did I bring the other ones in here? I want to show y'all the microphones I got for like when the special guests come. Good boy. This boy is choking me. I don't get to see him. I'm going to call it. It's a bad. Hold on. So as y'all see, you know, a clip on y'all, on your shirt. Clipping wherever he's pulling on my collar really tight right now, so but I ain't even go hold y'all. I've been thinking about what I've been wanting to talk about, and I really, I really have a brain fog today, so I'm about to just free bullet. Um, like, this is all like I said, raw cut, like, this ain't no plain speech. Cardi, are you telling a story, Ryan? Hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Is a no go. Alright, so do I want to talk about? Alright, so I don't know what I want to talk about that today. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it, because I've been already went on a rant today about it anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna talk about domestic violence um i'm not gonna talk about my baby dad's story until another day um because i really like i said they not really important and it's just like i said anything that i say in my life that has happened is not to tear anybody down that's in the story or in the event um it's not to belittle anyone none of that you know what i mean because some of these people i don't know already well a lot of the people that has done me dirty um, I didn't cut ties, you know what I mean? I'm the type of person, I'm gonna just love you from afar. See, you love you, but you just can't eat with me. Um, so it's kind of like that. Like, I really don't care about my baby dad. I ain't got no bad blood. I just can't stand the lying shit. Um, and the not taking accountability. And the one thing about me is, I'm so heavy on taking my accountability. Anybody that knows me know, like, nobody, like, is saying nothing new when they think they hurting me or getting back at me from their family yeah i got high so what a lot of the times y'all didn't even know unless i wanted it to be known and at that nigga i came home with 5k every day oh okay <laughs> yeah i'm on roof of my head me and my kids never had to i mean me and my daughter because he wasn't born yet never had to want for nothing ever the eating at five star diners all the time literally like and i'm not saying this was justifying shit i'm just saying we never was out and about like wanting for shit like my daughter was well taken care of well taken care of for real for real never was neglected we always did shit shit and then y'all talking about be trying to keep her away from him but that's a different story like i said but i just want to get a lot of the shit off my chest since this is recent and um it's caused a lot of shit towards me um like traumatic shit like it's uh, affected me a lot um it's affected my son um so yeah i'm like fuck it let's speak on it um and like i said i, I was with her so you feel me obviously i got love for her or i had love for her um not in love with her i don't love her um you know she didn't did what she did i'm just not fucking with it anymore like um this is just not the life i want for my kids nah i'm good just i don't want it so like i told y'all part of my i think i told a little bit of the story how i met her um how i went to rehab 
um, getting part of that was part of my bond release was getting sent to rehab. I had to do three months um, where I met her. She came the day after I got released from jail and went there. She came after, um, but she came by choice. I was sentenced there, so if I was to get kicked out or anything of that rehab, I would have had to do my back time, which was the eighteen months I think they were trying to get me to do. Yeah. So. Um, my memory is so bad and I, everybody be laughing when I be like it be from the Perkyons but it really did like that shit used to make me black out sometimes or it just made my, mem my uh, brain foggy memory foggy yeah so I met her it was funny because the first time she got there I don't know it was weird like I can't even explain this shit to y'all. Like, this is why I really think I fought so hard for her because how we met and how we got, how we attracted each other was fucking crazy. Like, I can't even explain the type of shit. Like, when I tell y'all, y'all gonna be looking at me crazy when I tell the story, but this is so fucking true. Like, even she felt that. Um, hold on, y'all. Side the day. Sorry, y'all. I don't know what happened. I think when I tried to click something that was showing up, it closed it out. But. He like I said, y'all gonna be looking at me crazy because this is how fucking crazy our body can attract energy or just, it's just fucking crazy. So, yeah, when I seen her, she just kept staring at me. Uh, I was happy to be home, so best to believe a bitch was smiling. I ain't smiling at you. I'm smiling because a bitch free. That's how I was feeling. So, I don't know if she just caught a friendly vibe, even though people say I don't look friendly. They always like, why you look mad? Oh, you look like you got an attitude. When I really be ch chilling, I just got a natural mean love. That's where he get it from. So, yeah, she saw her, she asked my friend Kayla, um, she was like, it's funny because me and Kayla was locked up together, and then we ended up both seeing each other there, it's funny, but, um, yeah, I guess Kayla was like, uh, that girl, um, asking about you and all this other stuff, and I was like, well, why she ain't just come to me or whatever, but I guess I don't know where that got lost in the message, but she didn't i don't know if she said that because she ended up i guess trying to fuck with ebony or ebony started trying to fuck with her point blank period whatever so i was like just letting it go i was like all right babe you feel me i ain't pressed i wasn't really looking for a relationship at all you feel me i was looking at if it was gonna be anything it was gonna be she gonna eat on pussy and that's it you feel me because uh, i was like that for a minute you feel me i ain't saying i was pressed for shit because i wasn't but if she wanted to get me hit that's how i felt like fuck it so I think they I finally what was it I think I did my hair I straightened my hair because I was like fuck I'm tired of my hair always being in a bun because even in jail I never straightened my hair I hated them little ass straighteners but um yeah I straightened my hair had these shorts cute shorts on I guess a little tank top on or whatever and when she seen me that day that girl eyes lit up man I seen that shit damn you telling the story I am yeah, this is all I hear. I hope y'all can hear me over this. But, um... <coughs> and, so, yeah, she seen me, and mind you, she trying to fuck with the girl Kayla, but she all about, oh, you look beautiful. So, I'm like, thank you. for me, whatever. So, she's like, she come out of nowhere. She's like, can I write you? Which was weird. I'm like, okay. I'm like, sure. So, she wrote me a little note. It's so crazy because I wish I had it. I usually kept everything, like every jail letter, even the letters we wrote to each other when we got locked up at one point, period. That's a whole different story. But you basically ended up writing and we ended up fucking with each other. Um, it was crazy because before that even actually happened, before she even asked to write me, the reason why I think she asked to write me was because our body did some, our bodies did some weird ass shit. So I'm coming up, it's like a weird house, like, uh, no, how was it? It was like, there's a hallway and then there's stairs, stop Cardi. So it was like, I was going up the stairs and um, she was coming down the hallway, about to go down the stairs. And it was like, right when we met, it was like our bodies was like magnets. Like, it was like, <laughs> it was like magnets. Like it just wanted to attract, like it was fucking weird. Like she even felt it, bro. She was like, yo, I'm not trying to be weird, but she's like, I know you feel that. And I'm like, nah, like something just, made me feel like I just wanted to grab her like 
like whether it was a hug, kiss, whatever, like literally just grab her and whatever. It felt so weird and she felt the same way because it was like we locked eyes for a minute and like just froze for a split second. And after that, that's when she was like, can I rate you? And then that's when she was like, all that other shit. And she got me. And um, ended up, I guess, we just was just mad and told that we was fucking with each other and they, um, she didn't want me to get kicked out. She didn't want me to go to jail. So she left. She actually ended up taking the fall for it and, um, was like I'll just leave you know what I mean I don't want you to go to jail she's like my P.O. fuck with me da 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 uh, whatever so ever since then I kind of was like this for real ever since then and I think the first time and it's crazy because I should have known it and I should have seen the signs Carter can you stop please damn we were trying to hit shit on the screen and can't even hear at the same time so I should have seen the red flags because it was like little shit like I don't know like shit was just way too good to be true at all like financially she was a great supporter when it came to financial support like I never had to want for anything that's one thing I could say every bill was always paid like but that's that doesn't make up for the shit at all I think the first time she ever hit me no the first actual every time she went crazy was she got high one time and she I remember I had um, a friend of mine, I'm not gonna say their name, but he was a guy friend of mine, and she was like jealous of him. It was weird, but um, she didn't want me hanging around with him. And I guess like she seen him make a lie, and I guess she was like so fucking high that she thought I was in it. That she chose Cardi. Relax, puppy. Relax. Y'all are not your baby. Um, she was like choking me out on the bed, literally forcing me to watch this live. Like we fighting, like. It, it was just a mess that was the first time but i remember we both went to probation fucked up like she just felt so bad and whatever it's the same shit oh i'm sorry i was high i was so out of it i never meant to do that da, 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 da. and then i remember the second time was actually when i found out i was pregnant with him um i i was detained for two days i think from probation for missing curfew um sneaking out early to see her and um i didn't know i was pregnant until after but basically she had relapsed and i was on the phone arguing half asleep and i fell down our steps which was like very steep and um, i fucked my shit up like my legs was fucked up and i couldn't get up nothing like it was horrible but the day after um i don't know i was thinking of talking to my gay best friend i was like man i ain't had my period in months like it's been you know and mind you i've been doing this um Mm, insemination ooh sorry with a sperm donor for him and all the tests came out negative even when I got locked up before that it said negative so when I took that test it just boom lit up like I was like what the fuck like this shit I was like this is not the perfect time and like when it said negative and jail you know I was thanking God cause I'm like okay you know what this is maybe a sign from God that it's just not time for us whatever um and then boom that's when she was pregnant i was just over i remember i was crying and bawling my eyes out i think the next day when she finally came home and she seen i was fucked up i remember she just kept bawling her eyes out and then i told her i was pregnant she couldn't believe it like she was like what like i don't know she just was saying the same shit oh i'm gonna change my kids need me all that shit or whatever and it's crazy because I don't know why I didn't see that first, but that bitch was a narcissist. Like, she was a narcissist. She was insecure. Like, when you're with somebody like that, there's really no talking to them about anything. Like, they're, and she's impulsive at that. Like, she's gonna do what she wanna do regardless. But if, what I'm saying, what anybody's saying, even the police, she don't give a fuck about no police, none of that shit. So, it was like, I don't know. It was just fucking crazy. Like, I felt like I was imprisoned in my own mind, in my own crib. Like, even after I had him, like, I think the worst time was when I had him. Um, I don't know when I was about to have him. I remember she had, I don't know what the fuck she was, I think she was drinking, but she was high. And, um, I forget what it was, but she seen something and she just snapped. Like, she just snapped. And I remember she had beat me out so bad. I remember she just kept kicking my stomach. Oh, I'm gonna kill you and this motherfucking baby. Da, 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 da. I just remember I kept 
food in my stomach, trying to protect him, getting my face kicked. Like, I think I posted the pictures on social media. I remember that for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, it was bad. Like, I had pressed charges and everything. The police took pictures of me basically naked in the hospital, bruises all over me, lip all busted, face fucked up, bite marks over me. Because she, when I was trying to restrain her from trying to hit me, she's biting me, trying to get me off of her. Like, I think I still got a bite the bite mark on my hand. You can kind of see her teeth marks. Hold on. Let me get stop right I want to show y'all. See right there. That's two teeth marks. Um, you know, so there's another one. She bit me on my face somewhere, but I think it went away. It's somewhere around my eye. That might be a little mark for real, right here. But uh, cause it was right around there. Oh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, so um, after that, that was when I kind of clicked in my mind, like, yo, you guys to go, like, this bitch is going to kill you. If she's not going to kill you, she's going to kill your baby and you. So I remember I left to shelter, uh, it was a recovery house for moms, um, even though I wasn't, I'm in recovery, but I wasn't in recovery. It was already like a year and a half later of me being clean. So I really wasn't even supposed to be in that house, but because I knew the woman in charge and she, I was telling her my situation, she was like, yeah, you gotta get out of there. And plus I was like two weeks away from about to have him. It was an active labor all month, like literally, maybe it was like three months, three weeks. Yeah, I was literally an active labor almost that whole three weeks. Like every time I walked, I had to stop, kept having contractions. Like he, it was like, his birth was literally the scariest day of my life, literally. Something that I thought was supposed to be so easy and good because even my daughter's birth was good and easy to me. Like, honestly, it was the easiest part of the pregnancy. So, and his delivery was fast. Don't get me wrong, it was fast. Like, three pushes, he was out. But my son didn't come out breathing. You feel me? All of the stress, like, they had to keep giving me drugs to make his heart be going because they said that I was having contractions. I was under too much stress from everything. You know, then my doctor had been watching me the whole three weeks every day, you know. Plus, I was getting induced because of it. Um, so he came out not breathing. It was just a lot, like a moment that was supposed to be beautiful was something that was scary. It wasn't fun. It wasn't something I want to remember in that way. You know, I had to visit my son in the NICU every day, bringing him milk because I was breastfeeding him. Uh, plus, I couldn't stay there all day because of where I was staying. I would lose the room. And mind you, I didn't have to pay no rent. Like, it was the place I needed to get back on my foot. I mean, on my feet. But coming to find out, she ends up finding out where I was at. And it up. She ended up seeing her son for the first time, and it was like, I don't know, they, it was just like, I tried to let her, I tried to co-parent with her. Like I said, anybody knows me, I've never been a bitter baby mom. If you try, I'll try. But don't try to sit here and degrade me to try to make your case seem strong or to make you feel better about yourself. It's never going to work. Because one thing about me, I don't care about what you do to me. But if you think you're going to raise my kids in a bad environment, you know, you're smoking more than crack, you're smoking dick. And dope. And crack and everything along with it so no like he, she became he became obsessed with her they both became obsessed with each other like he, he loved her more than he loved me like she was, he was falling asleep on her chest every night all of that so i remember she just became insecure again like she would keep throwing shit in my face but she has these crack attacks i called it and that's when i would know like okay shit finna go left soon she won't relapse and she gonna do something so I remember her, um, I went to community service and I had him with me. And, um, cause she, we got an argument, she wasn't watching him and I wasn't gonna bang nobody. It was like, I figured out, trust me, I ain't going to jail for nobody. And I said, you know, I swear he be acting like a cat sometimes. <laughs> it's crazy. But, um, yeah, what was I saying? So yeah, uh, she ended up coming in my room and attacking me and choking me. Um, other ladies called and the staff and they came and kicked her out told her she had to leave the next day so ended up the next day she left uh she kept coming by and bringing cartier clothes whatever he needed but i didn't care i didn't ask i didn't want shit to do with her she ended up getting a job she was doing good like really doing good um i think they stopped but again, ended up relapsing, so I was like, fuck it, I'm done. 
she ended up going to her ex-wife up top, fucking with her, like harassing her and shit. Hi, same shit she do to me. She was doing to her, and I should have believed her ex-wife. Honestly, that's the sad part. Like, but Ebony was such a good manipulator, and that's another sign y'all gotta be careful for. Like, most of the time, people that are in domestic violence to partners are usually narcissists and just fucking manipulative. Like, just manipulative as fuck. So definitely watch out for those. Um, you know, this I'm not saying this to feel happy. People feel pity for me because I really don't care. I don't already accepted this shit. I don't already came to terms with it. I don't already cried it out. I don't already did everything I needed to do. My main focus on my two kids. That's it. That's it. Nobody else. So I don't expect no boo hoos. None of that. I just expect to help somebody else open up about this shit and get justice for them. Like right now, I'm pissed in a case, and don't think that I don't be feeling away. I'm not no cold-hearted bitch. Like love don't just disappear overnight. When you was in love with somebody, that love don't just go away. So you feel me? I gotta basically put away my partner or my ex-partner for 20 years. Someone I was basically about to raise a family with. But at the end of the day, I'm not God. I'm not gonna punish you. That's not my job too. I'm just let the system do it. But I'm also gonna play my part. You can call me snitch, rap, whatever. I don't care. No bitch is going, or even nigga is going to put their hands on me in front of their kids or do a home invasion in my house and they'll broke my shit down. to show y'all the door, actually, while I go lock the door. So y'all can see for yourself. Hold on. Go back. Move back before you fall. I'm coming, Cardi. Hold on. All right, boo. Love you. Be safe. Like, literally broke the wall. Everything. So, you know, this is, like I said, that at that time, like, I just seen it wasn't going to stop. At that, like, this girl, I had a metal scent on my door. So, she shouldn't even have got in that easy. That bitch kicked it down, like, times relax kicked it in two times and that bitch broke down so so you know if you you can't love your kids and possibly love me if you're okay with putting me and your kids in harm's way that's how i see it you could not possibly love me and your kids if you're able to put them in harm's way like when i tell you this girl looked like the devil when she's high she looked like the devil like this is why, and I'm not even trying to be funny, but you know how people be like, or niggas be like, oh, I'm fighting demons, or people be like, oh, I'm fighting demons. Yeah, when you're getting high, you definitely fighting demons. I believe in them. When you're getting high, especially crack, you're fighting demons. Yeah, you're fighting demons. Because she looked like she was possessed. There was no getting through to her. The person that I used to feel safe in, and like their arms was like my protection, now I felt like I had to get away. Like I had to run. <laughs> like, it's so true when they say you want a woman to be submissive and you know be soft get her out of survival mode and that is the truest shit because all i've ever been since i've since she started relapsing has been in survival mode i've always had to figure out how to make shit happen how to make shit happen for my kids you feel me when before i met her i was already good i was good before i met her and that's what pisses me off with relationships too like why do y'all motherfuckers be fucking with people when they weren't checking for you in the first motherfucking place like that's what be killing me and we so grown now so it's like keep it real someone keeping it real with you like hey if we gonna fuck together you gonna keep it real if you want to just fuck cool i'm not the one for you that don't mean you feel me you can't do it just not with me but i made it you know what i mean clear to her like if you fucking with me you fucking with me i don't do that friends with benefits and all that other shit sneak links i'm not down with that it's a waste of time waste the dick waste the pussy no no mm -mm. But it's crazy because, like I said, when you love somebody and you see them at their worst and also at their best, it makes it hard to leave. It really does. And what killed me with her is she always be like, oh, well, you know, besides the drugs, I'm a great person. I'm a great partner. I make mean, no, you're not. Like I said, you're very financially supportive. But other than that, no amount of money is worth me and my kids' peace. It's not. It's not sorry. What can, what are you doing for me that I can't do for myself? I'm confused. Because when it came to helping you, it was me. 
me helping you get your license you feel me telling you apps to go study with you know pushing you to study no matter how many times you failed i'm there at every fucking um driver's test you got your diploma oh well, because i did your school work that's right mm -hmm. i pushed you even though there was nights you were tired oh babe i got you but you're 35 years old you feel me and i ain't saying this to put her down but it's the fact and i don't even care about what i helped her get or because she did it she did the the leg work you feel me that's hers but at the end of the day don't knock me down and make it seem like i ain't never been there for you and shit like i'm a bad person when it's really you when it's really you the one that fucked up you feel me i want to hear that and then to make yourself feel good is oh you fucking with somebody else da -da -da -da, that narcissistic shit oh this is how this is really how it goes oh i did wrong now you feel me i hurt you now you mad at me so now i'm the victim bitch what no no you want me to feel bad for you almost about to do 20 years motherfucker i don't give a fuck i don't and the old me really heartless i would have said bitch you lucky you ain't buried for real for real because i would have stomped your grave fucking two feet deeper that's how the old me would have been but i'm telling you i've grown so fucking much then i'm just like cool fuck you respectfully and keep it pushing i don't feel bad you wasn't thinking about that when you kicked in my door you wasn't thinking about that when you was swinging a metal stint at me trying to butt my head open then threatening me that you will stab me in the head and kill me or um I'm sorry take my son bitches you stupid like one thing that's crazy i would go to jail for my kids i swear to god like anybody that knows me she's so lucky she didn't get stabbed that night word I I'm telling y'all, she's really lucky she didn't get stabbed at me. Like, and it's just so fucking crazy, man. Because I'm not going to say who was there, but I have friends there. I mean, a friend there. And she froze in that predicament. You feel me? So it's like, when I seen that, I'm like, damn. Like, it's so crazy how immune I am to this shit that this shit don't even fucking scare me no more. I'm over here yelling at her, trying to snap her out of it for her to call the cops. Because my phone not in my hand and her phone in her hand. And she just st stood there like she don't fucking hear me, you feel me? But that's how fucking crazy that shit is. But that's how fucking fucked up I am too over that shit. That this shit's so fucking normal to me. You feel me? I could have died that night and it's crazy. I didn't even give a fuck if I was. I was just worried about everybody else. Literally trying to run out the crib so the bitch can follow me and get them away from her. You feel me? And it's crazy. I'm over here crying about my son, thank God. It was bear me said that that my friend sprayed trying to spray it on her, which it barely even affected her. It mostly got on me. For real, for real. I was barely could breathe, everything. Like I think it got to her eventually because she when I fell on that last step outside, cause I was like, my legs was moving so motherfucking fast I couldn't even catch up. Literally. Like we were both slipping and falling everywhere down the stairs. Literally. Down the hall. Like and it's just crazy that I couldn't even be in my own home. You feel me? I felt like I was literally in jail and it came to the point that the bitch was like before that even happened the bitch was stalking me well even after the home invasion happened she still was stalking me knowing where I was at where I'm hiding at you feel me trying to wait till the police get her and it's like the police wasn't doing their part either because they still understand you know the police came part of that day because she was already stalking me and I told them that I'm like yo she's gonna come back and I'm telling you next time it's not gonna be no knock on the door it's not gonna be no waiting outside she's gonna bust through and she's gonna try to kill me oh well if that happens call the police we'll be here I call they ain't here until 45 minutes later fucking my friend outside ain't got no shirt on fucking bare ass naked to these out hanging out the window trying to get some air and her son he done threw up you feel me because the maid's so strong we the whole building got evacuated literally everyone evacuated the building because the mace was so fucking strong literally like it's just crazy that this bitch don't see nothing wrong in what she do like to this day she's still trying to find a way to reach me literally having all different people hit me up from three ways because i've got her blocked on the jail shit blocked on the tablet even called the uh i forget what they called the people that's in charge at the jail so they can have it blocked on her side too still finding ways still finding ways oh i'm not gonna stop um trying to um reach my son i'm not but you can keep on you can keep on because you, you you crazy as fuck like how do you feel like that's normal your child like i'm not gonna bite my tongue i'm not gonna hide no filters i'd be lying if i said my son was perfectly normal he goes through shit and i see it because of her he thinks it's normal to attack people he thinks it's normal to hit people like literally he will really hurt you 
and he's small as fuck. Any of my friends will tell you this nigga is this little boy is strong, strong as fuck. And you know, he's such a, a sweet boy at times. Like before the shit happened, he was not like this. He's so much more attached to me now. Like it's fucking crazy. He don't want nobody else, literally. I think Lex is maybe the only one in Junie that he's already with, literally. The only two, which is his godmom and his auntie. Like, he don't even fuck with my mom. Literally. Oh, and his sister. He fuck with his sister. Heavy. Like, there's his road off. But, you feel me? My, my son has been through a lot. My daughter has already been through a lot with seeing her dad do the shit he's done to me. You feel me? So, I thank God that my daughter hasn't been around this shit. And I'm not saying... It, I'd rather it be him than her, but he's younger. There's only so much he can understand. So I thank God that he doesn't fully understand everything and it doesn't affect him 100% like as much as it would if he was older. But, um... Why are you driving shit on me? But, uh, you know, it's like the signs were there, but you guys gotta watch out, Literally. Cause it really be the ones closest to you that you gotta watch out for. I used to have to sleep with tasers under my pillow or you feel me like just to feel safe and, or amazed. And it's like now, if it ain't bare mace, I don't feel like it, it ain't no point in keeping shit with me or a knife. Now I gotta carry a knife with me when she get released out or now I feel like I have to. Because that's what's gonna happen. The bitch is gonna really go through it if she do this shit again. You know, and I pray to God that she you know be there for a while so i have time to relocate because i still got a couple months on my lease but it's like damn you don't ever feel bad or be like damn i don't fuck this girl up and her kids so bad let me leave her alone no it, it's not like that she don't it's just oh oh you just telling yourself to feel better oh you know i'm a good person when i'm not doing this and this and that baby you done done so much bad now that you're bad then i'll wait you good I don't know if anyone's been in a relationship like that where it's like, damn, you used to be good folks. You're good, you used to outweigh your bad. But now you, uh, your bad outweigh your good, baby. So what we do now? It's like, remember all them times I was like, oh, if you do this again, I'm going to leave. And I kept giving you another chance. And you'd be like, oh, well, if I do it again, I swear you can leave. Da -da -da -da. And then when I do it, it's a problem. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I told this story not to get pity not for anyone to feel bad but just because this is my story and this happens you feel me so i still have you know the right to get it out help somebody else that's been through that shit and if you have been through that shit there's a domestic hotline you feel me i'm gonna put that in the uh description definitely there's um what else damn what the fuck oh there's domestic shelters in there too if you have somebody that you feel like especially don't let them feel like oh just because they got financial over you that you can't get away no baby get away get away no amount of money is worth your peace or your kids safety or yours ever and i swear i've, I've literally since i got out of jail this has been my motto you know actually before i went to jail this was my motto hence why i went so fucking hard when i was selling perks but never give a man a chance to feed you because if you give them a chance to feed you you give them a chance to starve you and that ain't happening over you it's not and that goes for woman or man if you vice versa whatever your partner is just nah just know that you, you are strong enough and you will never know how strong you are until being strong is the only option you got left but i pray it never comes down to that for anyone anyone like this shit is not a joke like i get that feeling when you're in that situation you feel like death is your only way out like because you're getting beat on so bad and it's like fuck i can't even protect me or mine or it's like i'm trying and the person is so fucking strong or just so overpowering or so manipulative like when i tell you there is a light in that darkness there is there is a light in the end of the tunnel with this i swear to you there is but just don't be that girl where you feel like well oh i have kids with them or oh they pay all the bills i don't have i promise you all you have to do is just walk away that's the only step you gotta do at first. Once you make that step, everything else will fall in place. I swear. You will be like, it's like once you take that step, you'll be like, damn, it was never that hard. I could have I should have been to this. I could have been to this, should have been to this. Like I'm telling you, just do it. Just do it because I wish I did. I wish I did a year ago. The first time she did it. Literally. 
So, bye, bro. <laughs> so yeah, this is my talk your shit list. This is my domestic story. Um, next week I will have a special guest. I'm excited. Um, I'm not gonna say anything yet until I make the flyer for it. But I'm so excited. Uh, it's gonna be my first special guest. So I could be using microphones. <laughs> excited but um yeah i'm so i'm excited and it's gonna bring eyes up into a different um type of light on a different subject that i really think does need to be heard honestly it does um and he does some good things for the community 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 damn i cannot stop for the community community damn and the disabled community so can't wait to see him next friday and get this podcast recorded so y'all can hear some good shit and like i said y'all the pre-recorded shit is only gonna be for so long once i really start getting to have it in the routine because my schedules have been clashing so bad especially with living so um yeah it will be on saturdays now at 6 p.m like i said please forgive me that i'm not on time every time but i'm trying i swear i'm trying i'm trying but um yeah so comment share like um on the youtube channel subscribe and yeah y'all turn me up for real turn this the fuck up because i'm telling y'all if y'all not supporting now y'all gonna be hurt if you don't support them and then at that if i get to 100 followers i am going to be doing a hundred dollar giveaway so Give me to 100 subscribers, 100 followers, whatever, which one on the social media is. Because at least, I want to try to get at least one or two accounts of the social media. So at least 100 followers. If we can get that, then we can do the giveaway. And I'm really trying to do it because I feel like, how can y'all support me if I'm not supporting you? Or show me love back, you feel me? So I'm going to give some love back. I got a lot of love to give. So I'm going to give y'all motherfuckers some love. You feel me? And who doesn't need a hundred dollars? The fuck, you be lying. Like I don't care how rich you think you is on here or how balling you think you is, but um, it's a what's it called? Information or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, so a hundred dollars is gonna be a hundred dollars because a hundred dollars right now probably fill your whole gas on food right now. The way gas is looking. So yeah, take that little three hundred dollars. <laughs> so subscribe, follow, like, share, comment. And turn us the fuck up, y'all. <laughs> out of breath again. I need to start working out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, y'all. Please turn up. And, like I said, I will put all the information on the description for the hotline. And, what did I say? The domestic. Or, no, just the hotline because the domestic belt shelter is connected. They'll get you through with the hotline. So, yeah. See y'all, guys.